Hey, what's up YouTube? Balder here, and I'm playing some more DCS Worlds. And forgive the loudness, I'm going to close this canopy for a little while. See, my friend over there is starting up his MiG-15, while well, I am currently in my own MiG-15. Actually, I'm kind of renting it for a while. But for at least two weeks, I get to use this plane, and from what I can tell, it is quite fun. It is definitely an amazing plane, if you ask me. But aside from that, there are a few things that I need to mention. There are no tutorials for this plane. Well, at least not in-game. And that's something I am going to be talking about, don't you worry. But that's not really aside the point. The point is, is that there is a tutorial by Matt Wagner, and let me just first off say he is wrong. He is absolutely wrong. It is not how you, fly, um, how you turn on a plane. And I'll show you the proper way on how to turn this plane on, if my grammar gets any better. So, anyway, I'm going to open up the canopy again. Uh, it doesn't sound too loud now, so that's good. But I'm going to open up the ground crew menu and turn the electric power on. This is vital, because in Matt Wagner's video, he does not mention that. That is not part of the startup procedure. And I found out that you absolutely need it. It is dire that you have it. Otherwise, you do not get to fly. And if you do not get to fly, then how can you have any fun? Alright, so you want to switch all these switches on once you turn on the plane. And then you want to turn on this switch. Come on. And that switch. This switch. And that. Then you can test the fire extinguisher or the fire engine firelight. That's good. Last thing you want to do is check this. Make sure it's all the way up. And then open that cover there. Hold down the button. Wait for it to spool up a little bit. Press the home key. And then the home key one more time. Alright, so I am going to put the flaps down at least one notch. I'm uh, going to go back to the parent menu and exit. Oh yeah, actually I need to go back. Uh, tell the ground crew to turn off the electric power. We don't need that anymore. So let's see where in the world we are. We are away from the mountains, unfortunately. But I think we can start flying towards the Caucasus. So yeah, that's how you start it up. I don't understand why the DCS tutorial is like that, but again, that doesn't particularly matter. What I am going to do is that I'm going to check and see if every Everything is good. Mm, yeah. Those controls, well, not the controls, but the visuals do seem a little bit weird, like unnatural, but it is what it is. Alright, so, while well, my friend is taxiing to the other side of the runway, I'm going to be taxiing to that end of the runway, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it before he does. Alright, so steering this plane is just like steering the MiG-29, or MiG-21. Uh, hang on. So yes, yeah, so you hold on to the brakes, and then you... 
taxi with the said brakes. Don't know why they do it. I think it was to be a little simple with it. Which, whatever. I don't mind steering with differential brakes. That's never been my problem. But we are just going to taxi to the center line like that. Get everything up and running. And I'm going to go 100%. Alright, so I see I'm picking up airspeed. I'm going to rotate at 250. Rotate. And oh boy, does that... climb. Wait, no, I did not want that. Uh, still trying to get the gears figured out, but I'm going to put the flaps on. Is that the neutral position? I think it is. And those are flaps up. Okay, so there we go. We are now in the air with this plane, and holy crap, is this plane amazing. But yeah, this is quite an interesting plane that I wanted to buy, but seriously, I don't have the money to do so. I don't want to collide midair with this guy my AI buddy. Doesn't look like I'll have to. Which is a good thing. But yeah, I found out that this plane is incredibly maneuverable. So there is that. It is also... It is also very fast. You can outclimb the F-86. Not to mention that the guns are ridiculously powerful. They're stupid powerful. In fact, I don't even think that this game gives it justice because I just heard one of those rounds. If you saw my previous video, it took like four rounds to take out that Hawkeye. No, 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 no. It should take like one round and that wing is blown off. The cannon tears everything to shreds and what do I have to say to that? Oh, well, first off, I like it. It is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely beautiful, too. But while I'm heading towards the mountains, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a climb. See how well this plane climbs. I mean, I have no doubts in my mind that this is going to... Oh, yep. I did forget that, and... It's kind of hard to remember that thing. Alright, there we go. Okay, so I had to seal the canopy as well. I do like that this mod gives you tutorials that are in-game. That is just... That is epic. Kudos to you, Belsom Tech. Same guys who made the F-86, and yeah, I do have complaints about them, and their business practices and how sketchy they are. What do I do? Okay. Oh yes, I have to turn on my oxygen. I could die without that. Yes, again, kudos to Belsom Tech. But I'm gonna keep climbing. This thing is already at a high altitude. But I'm not here to test hypoxia or anything like that, or to see how high it climbs. No, I'm here for a different reason.
Can I exhaust the fuel? Hmm, apparently not. I don't know if that's a feature that Belson Tech hasn't put in yet, or if I'm just not doing it right. Also, I have no idea what that shutter is. There are a lot of things about this plane that I don't understand. Like for one, can it reach Mach 1? Yes, it can. Now I could reach a thousand kilometers an hour. Whoa, crap. I think I have a problem. Um. Okay. That was pretty bad. But anyway. I guess I learned my lesson. You cannot overspeed in this plane. I actually looked at the details and I actually suffered a mechanical failure because I oversped. So, I guess there is that. Anyway, I am cutting to a pre recorded flight test of the MiG 15, and I have to say I am quite impressed. As I said earlier, the MiG 15 is very maneuverable and it has a very powerful turning radius. One thing I do need to mention though is that on both of my wings, which you probably just saw there, I have external fuel tanks. I didn't intend to have that added on, it's just something that I did. So anyway, I'm just flying over this town, top gunning them, and oh my god, you know, Despite the fact that this is kind of dangerous, it would be really fun for me to do this. I mean, can you actually imagine? I mean, of course, there. It, this is definitely dangerous. You should never do this in real life. But considering that this is a simulator, I'm just having the time of my life doing this. Or I did have the time of my life doing this. So, as you can see right now, the climbing capabilities of this plane is ridiculous. And that's not all. Coming up, there is going to be something that's pretty impressive. Even more impressive than this. So, I guess you'll just see that. But flying through the canyons, you know, there's always going to be something dangerous. I mean, you could be dealing with wind. You could be dealing with... Well, I guess wind. Or you could be dealing with clouds, cumulogranite, as they like to call it. But, for the most part, I'm just going under the assumption that it's a nice, windless day, which almost never happens anywhere in the world. And anyway, this is the impressive part that I was talking about. So I'm going to be flying into this crevice, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just decide to inch in there, cut a little bit close towards the mountain, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I decide to s descend closer to the rocks in themselves. See how well this thing can climb. And as you can see ahead of me, there is this giant wall of rock that will turn my plane into a smoldering crater. So you. Yeah, not something that you should definitely try, but this is what really made this plane amazing. Alright, so I'm approaching this mountain peak, and I start to climb it. Of course, I add in full throttle, and then I pretty much go straight up in the air, climbing through this mountain. And holy crap, I'm surprised that this jet is capable of doing that. And I almost get to the point where I stall. I'm at a minimum speed right now, and I should probably not have turned because that could have led into a spin. But anyway, that's pretty much the gist of what I did.
Alright, so now I'm just going to do one more thing. I was going to try to navigate through the mountains, but I couldn't find my heading indicator. Apparently, this is my heading indicator. I was kind of confused because this does not have a moving card. And what that means is that the entire thing doesn't move. What does move is a plane in the center, which kind of confused me. Most American planes have the numbers move. So that's kind of weird. But whatever the case, I'm going to be trying to land in that airport. See how things work out. Also, for some reason, you need to hold down the B key in order for you to slow down completely, or in order for you to keep the brakes deployed. I found that kind of weird. But not insanely weird. Oh well, I'm adding a notch of flaps. I don't know the controls of this plane as of yet. I'm going to be doing a little bit more studying before I actually go any further with this. But yeah, that flap went down. And now we have full flaps. I'm going to bring down the landing gear. Oh, shit. Yeah, again, I don't know the controls. You have to forgive me. Alright, three green. Shift G is how you lock it back up. Otherwise, you will do damage to the hydraulic systems, from what I heard. Or you'll use up the hydraulics. I'm not sure which. Oh, well, I'm definitely a little bit low for the landing, so I'm going to have to change that. But so far, things are good. If you'll notice those, I guess, striped sticks poking out of a wing, that's to indicate the flap and gear position, which is a nice little addition because who knows, maybe one of those lights is broken, and if you don't know if the landing gear is up or down, bad things can happen, and they have happened before historically, so yeah, I guess I'm done rambling. I just need to land this plane. And I hope it's going to be an easier landing job than landing the MiG-21 because, oh my sweet Jesus, that is a difficult plane to land. Oh well. I'm still quite low on the horizon. Or still quite low on the glide slope. I'll have to change that. One thing I find very interesting, and this is something I didn't notice before, but the exhaust on the MiG-15 is virtually non-existent. And that's kind of important because on the F-86, the smoke is quite apparent. It is very visible, and it's very black and smutty and whatever you want to call it. Or so sooty, I, I don't know what the term is. But I am going to land this plane. I'm gonna see how it works. Also, I think I know someone named Smoot. That's why I thought of it. Oh well. I digress. It's been kind of difficult trying to get this video to come out, to be honest, because I've been a little bit busy. Not too busy for me to actually make the video, but it's... things have been quite busier beforehand. I have no idea why this thing is ringing at me. That's That could be my radar alt altimeter, as far as I know. Один в ноль семь. 
All right. After landing, flaps up. And there we go. So yes, this is the MiG-15. It is on Steam now, and I'm going to be doing... Yes, it is on Steam. It's also on the Eagle Dynamics page as well for about $50. I'm going to make a review on it as well, so I hope you guys tune in for then. But anyway, with that said, like and favorite this video and subscribe. There are plenty more videos where that came from, so you... Have a nice day.